I've just spent 30 hours creating a realistic drawing of the Rolls-Royce Ghost and in today's video I'm going to walk you through the entire process from start to finish so let's just dive straight into it. So to do this drawing I obviously need a sketch and to do the sketch I always use the grid method. Now this drawing is actually like one drawing but four drawings in one if that makes sense. So here you can see me using the car and in a second yep we've got the spirit of ecstasy here and this is basically I'm using the grid method here to provide more reference points so the sketch can be just that extra accurate because it's easier to see where everything needs to go so I can be like transfer what's on the photo to the piece of paper here. Now the um, engine here was a bit of a pain in the bum because those cylindrical cone things, they were quite hard to get like proportional and all the same size and like in perspective and stuff, but the grids kind of helped with that and I finish it up a bit later on with the markers and stuff. Now the wheel hub here, a fun fact about this is that it doesn't actually spin with the wheel, which is pretty cool. But again, the, um, the grids here really made a light work of it. And at the top here, I'm doing the Rolls Royce logo. So I actually had like a picture of the Rolls Royce logo and I kind of just copied it and I made sure that it's directly um, halfway on the page. So I measured out halfway and then I just used like a rectangle and stuff. And now I'm using a kneadable eraser on it to remove the excess graphite that would otherwise smudge and smear whilst I'm coloring it in. And then yeah, it just makes the coloring in process just a lot easier as you can actually see where everything needs to go. So now I'm using markers on this and I'm basically just jotting in where all the tones and colors needed to go. So obviously in the darker areas, I'm using dark blues and purples and stuff, even really dark grays. And in the lighter areas here, I'm using the light blues, some lilacs, even some lighter grays as well, just to blend it a bit. But on the topic of blending, I'm never really like too particular about um, blending the markers together here. It's just to do a base there for the colored pencils to go on top of a bit later. And it really helps them to make them look vibrant. And it also gives me a blueprint for where everything needs to go. So on the Spirit of Ecstasy here, just jotting in all the dents and stuff. And on the engine cap here, it's pretty much just all grays, but I do also incorporate a bit of lilac here as well, just to make it a bit more vibrant. And on the wheel cup here as well, just using those circular strokes just to make it look nice and cylindrical. So now moving on to the colored pencil work, and this is where I went into the spirit of XC here, and I just jotted in where all the dark indentations are, and then I did the highlights, and then I used intermediary tones to blend between the two. And in the second, um, you'll see me using a white paint pen just to add in all the highlights and stuff, and you can really see how it makes it pop. And then once this is done, I then go back in with the colored pencils and just really blend them into the um, marker work so they don't look like they're sitting on top and then I go around the Rolls Royce logo with a black pen just to really crisp it up and make it a bit darker and then I go onto the car here and what I'm doing here is using lots and lots of layers to really try and make it nice and smooth. And the exact pencils that I'm using for this are Faber-Castell's Polychromos. And the reason that I'm doing this is first of all, they've got really nice um, vibrant pigments, but second of all, it's because they're oil-based and this means that they blend together really smoothly. And you can see here that I've gone from the car to the engine. And this is something that I'd recommend to like everyone who's getting into drawing or is pretty good at drawing as well, is to just cycle through different parts of the drawing as well, because something that can happen if you're just working on the same part is you can just stagnate, but working on a different part of the drawing it keeps, it keeps it nice and fresh and then you can come back to that area and then once you come back you can pick up on stuff that you may have missed the first time around with fresh eyes which is something that often ha uh, yeah, happens with me a lot oh talk too fast now onto the wheel here this is something that i kind of hit first and i was like ah oh, i'll just define the stuff and then i'll come back to it a bit later so again and then i'm just coming to the panel here so just splitting it into these different sections and cycling through it and using lots of layers here and even like the gray parts as well on this car i'm still using some blues just to keep those gray areas still looking nice and vibrant so they don't look dull in comparison to everything else and it also shows a reflection from the sky helping to make it look even more realistic. So what we need to move on to now is on the grill here. I'm using a dark pencil to firstly refine all the different um, grill pieces and yeah, going back to the engine here. So again, that point of just cycling through all the different parts and on the Rolls-Royce engine, you can see here, you've got the Rolls-Royce um, writing in the thing. And this was quite a pain in the bum to do. I kind of had to do it multiple times, but in the end I got, got there. And on the Rolls-Royce hub here, you've got me using some light blues just to show that reflection again and using circular strokes just to show that it's nice and cylindrical. And there's obviously a bit that's popping out as well. So I'm just making sure that the pencil work conveys that as well. So you've got kind of got it's curving in with the um, wheel alloys there. So moving back onto the car, we've got the shadow. So I go in with like alcohol markers and then I go in with the colored pencils just to darken up and really refine everything. And then I go over with the colorless blender and then I go in with the white paint pen just to add in all the highlights. And boy, that was a lot of talking. So if you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say a massive thank you. And I would really appreciate it if you commented the word melon just to really confuse those who left halfway through. And if you want to see more of my work, just be sure to hit that subscribe button and another video should appear on screen right now. So yeah, I shall see you over there.